Hey guys and welcome to Knit Grit. In today's video we're going to go over how to make this really cute, simple crochet dishcloth. I usually don't do crochet dishcloths just because I prefer how knit ones um, work better. They're a bit more absorbent and can actually take in a lot more yarn, but I know that a lot of people don't knit and would rather crochet. These ones are um, better than most crochet uh, patterns that I have worked on. This is with a interesting cotton that I've actually never used before this. It's called 24-7 Cotton by Lion Brand Yarns. I got this at my local AC Moore and it actually absorbs really well. I'd be curious to see what it looks like um, in a knit pattern as well, but I find that this is actually like kind of a happy medium for my, my not absorbent absorbent absorption problem there we go so that problem is taken care of and it actually works really well they uh, crochet up really quickly and you can make them in all kinds of tons of colors because these come in an absurd amount of colors as you can see there's all these really pretty ones but they also have like yellows and just every single color you can think of they have them I haven't tried this in the Hobby Lobby I love this yarn but I think it would still be really um, nice doing that too it also scrubs really well because of how I don't know, I just, it's a different pattern than I'm used to. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, you're going to need a um, size H or a five millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a Susan Bates as always, because that's my preferred. And all you need is some kind of cotton. Today I'm using, again, 24-7 Cotton by Line Brand Yarns. You can use any of their colors. I used uh, some purples and some blues for this one. And you're also gonna need some scissors and some darning needles. So I've got my scissors right here and a nice darning needle right here. All right, let's get started. Crochet, or a half double crochet, depending on how where you are. Sometimes they're called a triple crochet if you're um, actually elsewhere and then a triple crochet is not a triple crochet. It gets really confusing if you go over the pond and it's completely different terms over there. But in the US, for US terminology, this is called a double half or a half double crochet. It's really easy. I'll show you how to get uh, to doing it in just one second. I just want to kind of highlight the fact that I just made my entire ball explode and my yarn is everywhere. So we're gonna have to deal with that for a hot second and I'm sorry. Um, to start out, you're gonna to want to do a slip knot. I have an entire video on how to do a basic slip knot, but essentially you take your tail end right here, you criss over and pull your tail through that little loop and that is a slip knot. We are going to now put that onto our hook and we're going to chain. Uh, a lot of people chain differently than I do. I crochet with my yarn going from left to right and not from right to left. So if you go from right to left, this is essentially the same thing. I'm just going to pull through and go right to left and pull it through that initial chain. I'm going to chain 26 stitches. This first uh, slip knot counts as a chain in this pattern. You'll understand why later. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. There we go. You'll notice that it does not look that long. It will get wider with the more stitches that you place inside of it, and it also might tag along some of your hair if you decide to, you know, crochet that in. Um, I like to also leave a decently long tail, at least a tail that is as long as my chain. So that's about six to eight inches, depending on how long you make this. Um, you can chain, if you don't like how um, wide this pattern is if you want to make longer or wider dishcloths all you have to do is add more chains and then you just repeat the same um, stitches over and over again for a longer time so here I did 25 stitches and I went for uh, just as many rounds this is about six inches so I measured how many inches it was across and that's how long I went for with my uh, repetitions it's just one stitch going across all of those same stitches so it's really easy so I did 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I did 20 rounds um, up, and I did 25 uh, stitches across. So that's how I did that. It's super easy, and if you want to add stitches, all you have to do is um, basically add your stitches. It's two stitches across plus one. It's really super easy 
if you want to make this longer or you want to make this shorter or how are you however you want to do it if you want to make a little tiny mini ones that will also work so in each and every single one of these chains you're going to place a half double crochet and the way that you do that is you're going to wrap your yarn however you wrap it if you go from left to right it's left to right if you go from right to left left to right it does not matter and you're going to wrap it hold on to that yarn and go into the second chain from your hook pull your yarn again after wrapping it and you'll have three stitches on your hook wrap again and pull through all three of those stitches that is different than your normal double crochet in that usually you split those in that you go through only the first two and then you go through those two that is a double crochet but instead it's super easy and you're just going to make sure that that your thread is just going to go through all three of those live stitches on your hook so we're going to go through that again wrap wrap go through all three and you're going to go about halfway down the middle that's fun when you pull on your uh yarn too tight and your tension's too hard it can be a little bit difficult I go down halfway and then I take my tail oh no my yarn my yarn decided to get tangled but I fixed it I take my tail and I start working it as if it is a part of my chaining this hides the tail and you don't have to deal with it later I find you don't have to do this if you find that it's easier just to um, take your darning needle and put it in there afterwards. I just tried to do a single crochet. <laughs> Oops. Alright. Double half. I get sidetracked. I try to chat too much. Bad news bears. Alright. If you find that it's easier just to darn it, then just darn it. But I find it's easier just to work in it. Work it in while you're crocheting. And it looks better, I find. Alright. So here I'm going to take my tail. This is going to be the difficult stitch because once it starts getting knit in, it's kind of easier to deal with. And you'll see that I have it right above my chains right there. And I'm going to wrap and do like normal. I'm just going to make sure that my hook goes under both the chain and the tail. And wrap it and pull through. Take it and I'm just going to keep doing that until I get to my very last stitch. If you need to pull your tail a little bit wider so that you have more, um, t more of it to, to play with, then you can do that as well. This is a really easy pattern. All you have to do is know how to do basically some training and how to half double crochet and it's super easy. I made those three um, dishcloths in an hour and a half so it's about a half an hour per dishcloth for each one. Sorry I had to rearrange. And I have my desk against this. The elbows can hurt if I try to lean against them too hard. TMI, but still. And we're, oh, I try to get it above. Don't do that. At least I didn't split my yarn yet. I'm probably going to the next stitch now that I've said it, but it's always fun. And I'm on the last two stitches. You can count if you need to. I just know that I'm, I'm just gonna go into the stitches as I go. So this should be 24. And then you'll find that this is not, right here, a chain technically, but I'm going to go into my first slip knot as I would have before. It's really tight and it does not like me, but I find that it makes my edge look a bit more seamless, and that's how I wind up with the 25 stitches even though I added a stitch. Alright, and so now I've got this. I pull my tail so that it's nice and tight, and you see you can't even see it once I cut this tail. I'm going to cut my tail now that I've done that, pull it through, no tail, it's gone, invisible. Now we've got just this one round. We're going to chain one, oh, we're fall off our yarn, that works too. Chain one and we're going to flip and start going through both stitches on the top. So see here, we've got a V going on right there on the very top of our hook. We're going to wrap and pull that through as well, and we're going to keep going until we reach the other end. We should have 25 stitches across for this pattern. And we're essentially just going to keep repeating that, going across, chaining, turning, 
going across with the half double crochet, chaining, turning, until we get to um, the length that we want it at. It's a really easy design, it's a really easy pattern. Um, I would recommend this for somebody who's just starting out if you really want to get comfortable with a stitch. I'm going to keep going and I'll show you how I do my chain and turn one more time. And I just keep going through these stitches like so. And also, you know, tangle my yarn. Because that's a part of it. That's a part of the process, don't you know? And I take my yarn out, and everything just goes flying. Bun times, had by all. 24. And don't catch on those. 25. There we go. And then you chain. This chaining is what makes it so that your edge looks pretty straight. Otherwise, you'd have like a little bit of an ingroove every time, and it would just look weird. So we take it from being normal facing, and we turn it to its other side and then we start going through the back again and again we just do this until it's the length that we want so this is round three and I wound up doing 20 rounds for the other ones for this um, this yarn I know that some other people might not have the same tension that I do so I always say be aware of your tension because 20 rounds for me is probably gonna look different than what 20 rounds for you is gonna look like when it comes to a design this simple and easy um, always just kind of make sure that your tension is looking the way that it should be. And if you think that 20 rounds is too much or too little, always add another round or subtract another round. Always just go by what you think it looks like. If it doesn't look right, then it's not right and for you. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You just keep going across and chaining and turning and chaining and turning. I'm going to get this to 20 rounds and then I'll see you at the end. All right, be right back. All right, so now that we've gotten to the end and I've done 20 rounds around of just going back and forth and back and forth, I've done this 20 times. I'm at the last stitch right here and I'm going to just slip stitch into that. Really easy, really quick. And I'm gonna chain one just cause I find that that kind of caps it and makes it a bit more oh, biscuits. I just like cut that one. Oh, it actually worked out. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to pull my tail and pull that all the way through and that way it's a nice crisp edge. And what I'm going to do with my darning needle is I'm going to line my tail with my darning needle. I'm going to push it through the side here and then push it back through the front. That way it kind of just, you know, rounds out that way and it's completely hidden. And next I'm going to work it through the back of the stitches for the rest of this. This is what I was talking about earlier when I was doing this with my tail. When I did that with my tail, now I don't have to find all the backs of the stitches and I don't have to worry about whether or not I got them into the middle of each stitch to hide it. I find it easier. You could also try to time out how much, like what your yarn's gonna look like and try to feed it that way through your uh, stitches at the very end, but I find that this is just easier. I do that for about an inch and a half and then I cut it off like so, make sure that it's a part of my work, and that's completely done. I take my tail, I try not to make too long of a tail when it comes to this, but generally the longer tail you have, the more options you have, so it works either way. I have this and it's done. All right, and that's really all there is to this pattern. So if you like this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. It really does help out our analytics and helps get us out there. We're closing in on almost 10 thousand subscribers and that is insane. I'm thinking I'm gonna do a big giveaway so let me down, know down in the comments what you'd like me to do. I think it's usually it's something that I've 
crocheted or I've made. I've been doing a lot of really cute Luna dolls, so let me know if that's something that you would like. Thank you for watching this video, and before we go, I would like to give a shout out to our uh, Patreon supporters. Without your support, we would not be able to grow as a channel, so thank you for your generous pledges. If you're interested in supporting our channel, go to www.patreon.com knit, and you can see all the different rewards we have uh, for our patrons there. Uh, if we have free patterns, early access to tutorials, and more. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. Until next time, guys. Bye!